Hi, and welcome to The Bright Balloon, a podcast where I'm sharing bright ideas for your balloon business. My name is Sarah Meyer, and I'm a balloon business owner like you, and I love the creative side of what I do, but I really love the business side, which seems to be the part where most people struggle. So I'm here to help. Each week, I'm bringing you an episode full of bite-sized tips you can use to make tiny improvements to your business. I want you to make more money, eliminate stress, and learn along with me as we grow our creative businesses together. Welcome to The Bright Balloon. Hello and welcome to this episode. It has been a while since I've recorded. Uh, Last week we took a break to celebrate Thanksgiving and the week before I was just getting home from Balloon Boss Summit in Orlando, Florida and I had such a great time um, meeting a lot of people that listen to this podcast but also being so motivated by so many other business owners. It was such a great time to focus on what's next for my business and also learn some foundations that are just going to make me an even stronger balloon artist and stronger business owner. So I was so excited to be there and meet a bunch of people. And one of the things I love about Balloon Boss Summit is that we all eat lunch together. So for me, that's where the best conversations happen is kind of in small groups, just chatting and kind of talking shop. And a lot of people had great feedback about this podcast. I was so excited to meet a bunch of listeners. It was, it was really fun. Um, But one of the things I heard over and over is that people missed some of these shorter episodes. They liked the long interviews that we've been doing with guests, but also they really liked those early episodes that were just a few minutes long and laser focused and focused on like three or four or five very doable action steps. So that's what I'm going to do today. We're going to keep this episode short and we're going to keep it really focused and I'm going to be talking about automation. You know that is one of my favorite topics is automating all of those things in your business and in your life that you don't need to take time to think about. Um, But a lot of times you need a certain platform or a specific tool to actually get access into some of those automation features. So today I'm going to be talking about things that most of them are free and most of them you already have access to but you might not know about. So the first one is actually in Instagram and it is the saved response option and I mentioned this in an episode earlier but I didn't go into detail basically I always am encouraging people to put on auto responders but in Instagram I actually like to chat with people so I don't put on my my auto responder but every once in a while I do get a question where it's the same response every single time it's someone asking if I'm available or asking what my pricing is and instead of having to type that out every single time. Instagram has a cool feature called save responses and you can basically save a little template that you can click on and then send to that person and it saves you the hassle of typing out a long message with your thumbs on your phone and making typos. So if you go to your messenger area in Instagram, there's a little bubble with three dots. If you click on that, it opens up your save responses and you can enter them in and save them so that you're not retyping out the same thing over and over and over either to clients or, um, you know, whatever questions you're getting on Instagram. Many of them are probably repetitive, but if you're like me and you don't want to fully commit to that autoresponder because it pops up every single time someone sends you a message, um, then the save responses feature is a great option. All right, another opportunity to automate comes from my favorite platform, Canva. They have done it again with a new batch of feature releases. We'll do an entire episode on Canva early in the year, I promise, because they are coming out with so many features, it's really hard to keep up. One of the things that they just launched was a content planner. And you know I've kind of gone back and forth on this. I used to use later.com to plan some of my Instagram and Facebook posts. Then I kind of backed off and stopped planning Now Canva has just launched their own content planner and it's so good. The thing that's awesome about it is that you can design a graphic in Canva and then schedule it right inside Canva. You never have to like download or upload or move images around. You can just take your content and blast it off to whatever social platform you want. So most of the time I'm scheduling for Instagram. Um, You'll notice like the podcast images, those are things that now I have started scheduling because they're predictable. I know exactly when I want them to go live. I know what they're going to be. I'm still not using the content planner for my balloon business because that I think I have so much content, it's easy to take a picture and type a caption 
and just post it live. But for the Bright Balloon account, I am starting to utilize that content planner. The other thing is cool is that my um, employee, Nicole, she can go in and she can schedule graphics for me under the same account. Um, you can also schedule like audiograms. So if you've seen those, we make those for the podcast now, like a preview of the sound and that's basically you can do a video you can do anything so it's it's a really new feature but it's really good so far and it's always good when you're typing out captions on a keyboard versus on your phone I just think you're less likely to make typos um, but check out Canva and check out that new scheduling planner that they have it's it's really good it's called the content scheduler um, it's on the left side of the of the Canva page and it's 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 great just like everything that they've come out with um the third thing isn't so much an app or a feature but something that i don't think a lot of people are doing and it's something that i kind of live by and that is setting up auto savings at your bank so if you have like a business bank account which i hope you do you might want to start another account or a few i have a bunch because i follow profit first but if you have your main account where all of your income goes into you can go in to your bank account probably just on the app like I use Chase and I could set this all up on the app and I have a hundred dollars a month pulled out and dumped into a savings account and that way I'm automatically saving a little bit off the top without actually thinking about it um, another profit first reference uh, something I love that is mentioned in the book is this toothpaste theory that when you're brushing your teeth and you have a full tube of toothpaste you use like a big glob of toothpaste and if it falls off the toothbrush into the sink you just get another big glob and you brush your teeth and you don't even think about it but when you run out of toothpaste you magically figure out a way to make that empty tube last like another two weeks because you keep forgetting to buy more toothpaste and the whole analogy is meant to say that like when you're down to the wire with your money you stretch it a lot farther than when you have a ton of money in your bank account and you just spend and spend and spend because it feels like you have so much so um by taking a little bit off the top basically by taking your money out when you have that full tube of toothpaste you're not going to feel it as much and you're going to get very used to it versus when you feel like you don't have any money in the first place that's a really hard time to start saving so set up those auto savings nets and set up another account so that you are just subconsciously like you're not even doing anything you've automatically set it up to pull out your own money and start saving it for something else so maybe you're saving that for like a personal emergency fund maybe you're saving it for a van purchase maybe you're saving it to pay for your convention it's it's easier to do it if you don't even know that it's happening it hurts a lot more to take money out of your account and move it it doesn't hurt at all when a robot does it for you half the time you kind of forget all right, we are going to take a quick break and then I have two more tips. Hi friends, it's me, Sarah. I wanted to take a second to highlight a brand new resource I have available for you in the show notes wherever you're listening. I collaborated with my friend Aaron from Young and Wild Balloon Company and we've created the most awesome interactive color chart that you can customize and use to sell to your clients. We all know that we have favorite colors across various brands or every once in a while a color is out of stock or a customer selects a color that only you know is really see-through and not a great quality and you just wish you could remove that from the color chart. Well, now you can do all of those things. We have brought in every color from all of the major brands and put them into an awesome Canva template so you can essentially build your own color chart with consistency and ease so that your customers will pick the balloons that you actually want to use and actually have in stock. So go ahead and check that out in the show notes wherever you are listening. It is a simple download and then you can click and drag and customize your own color chart. All right, let's get back to the show. All right, here is another tip that you can start implementing today. And this is kind of a long process, but one that takes almost no energy. So that is setting up annual reminders on your calendar. So I use Google Calendar. I love it because it's always with me. It's on my phone, it's on my computer. My husband can see it. Um, we can share events. All my balloon jobs go on there automatically. Um, but I have started setting up annual reminders for those things that I always forget. So everything from like a birthday to paying my quarterly taxes to renewing my business insurance, all these things that don't come up frequently enough to remember. And then once a year, they always seem to sneak up and surprise you. So 
I put them on my calendar and then you can go into the settings and just make that an annual reminder. So now for the end of time, you'll get a notification whenever you set it to, I usually like like a month or two warning. So you'll get that notification that you have to take care of that task and it will no longer feel like an emergency or a surprise or something that you're having to look up when the deadline even is. Um, Something like liability insurance or any of those annual not fun bills that pop up and you're not sure when they're due and you're not sure when you have to pay them and you're not sure if you're going to have enough money when they come due. Set up annual reminders in your calendar so you aren't surprised. All right, and the final reminder, this is a shameless plug, is to subscribe subscribe to this podcast. So let me explain. If you are listening to this podcast on the website, which I know a lot of you do, you are having to manually go to a website and look and see if there's a new episode every single week. And I know that doesn't take a lot of energy, but it's brain power you don't need to be spending. So if you listen in Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can subscribe and then every time there's a new episode, it'll just show up on your phone. So when you open the app, you'll see my little face ready to share some business news with you. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. That helps you get updates. And um, it's something that you don't have to think about. And I do get a lot of messages from people asking when the new episode will be out. And that's because they're not subscribed. So um, sometimes I'm late with the email. Sometimes we're late with Instagram posts. Sometimes we don't do either of those things because life just happens. But if you're subscribed every time a new episode releases, you will automatically get it. So I hope that helps. All right, that is it for today. I purposely kept it really short, but really action filled. If you do all of these things today, it shouldn't take you more than 15 minutes. And they're all super small, but over the long haul, it takes a lot of mental energy off your plate, things that you don't have to think about, things that you won't forget to do. And it'll keep you more focused on the things that you actually do want to pay attention to. So I will see you next week and the week after, but then we are taking two weeks off for the holidays. So we won't have a new episode the week of Christmas or the week of New Year's. I hope you are all as busy as I am as we round out this awesome year, but I will see you next week to talk about goal setting and launching into 2022. Thank God. I literally didn't know if we were going to make it. That wraps up this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I tried to keep it bright and light in a few minutes or less. I'll talk to you next time. For more information about any of the resources or courses mentioned in today's show, please head to thebrightballoon.com or check the show notes wherever you're listening.